My name is Adrian Nanchev, and this channel is all about helping you become a remarkable entrepreneur. So today, I've got Anthony on the show to talk about all the stuff that he is doing, writing and beyond. So Anthony, please, 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 tell the audience who you are, what you believe in, what's your story, and what difference you want to make in the world. Oh man, how much time do we have? Uh, my name <laughs> my name is Anthony Portillo. I live just outside Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the United States. Um, you can check me out on, I'm going to plug my blog, medium.com, at Anthony Portillo, P-O-R-T-I-L-L-O. And I am Anthony Portillo on Instagram. I am a, a writer, a, a coach, a consultant. Uh, I do a, some other things on the side. Uh, ultimately, the difference that I'm trying to make in the world is I'm trying to help people overcome the lies that they believe about themselves that hold them back from living the life they're intended to live. And whatever that is, we've all had voices in, outside and inside our minds saying that we, we're not good enough. We can't do this. We can't do that. We're not this. We're not that. And then we have other influences saying this is how you should be. This is how you should look. And I kind of want to fight against that and say no it's you can make your own way and it doesn't have to be like that and you can see the world and yourself differently and uh then you can begin to engage the world differently yeah um yeah the, this channel is all about becoming a remarkable entrepreneur and this podcast is pivoted over the past few days but it's all about sharing remarkable stories and sh sharing inspiration about people that are doing the things they want to do. Oddly enough, yesterday, about 24 hours ago, I was just doing a talk, I was doing a speech, and that, that speech is on my YouTube channel, about how we can all be, be remarkable and all live the life we want to be, want to have, and become the person we want to be, but not everyone dares to do it. And I, when, I, when I see people that are, you know, in their 60s, for example, or even 100 now, or people in their 40s, maybe even as, even in their 20s, and they're, they're living a life of what's called quiet desperation. They're scared. They are... Okay, there's, this, there's a word I could use, but they're, they're scared, and they're worried about life, and they're not doing what they want to do. I heard a statistic recently that most people, 80% of the time that people have, they're spending it doing something they don't love or don't enjoy. And all this stuff, I think that's a waste. That's a loss. It's a loss of talent, ability... It can do something for the world that can be remarkable, but people don't dare. Oh, I think that's so true. I mean, how many people, even listening to this right now, spend 40 hours a week at a job they hate, right? Doing things they don't like to do um, just to collect a paycheck. I mean, sometimes you have to do that. Like, I have a, a job that I go to every day as well as the work that I do outside of that because the work that I do outside of that fluctuates and my life and my family uh, require a certain amount of uh, stability. So, you know, I do that, but I also am fortunate enough that I work in a space that I'm comfortable, something I'm good at, and something I enjoy. So not everybody has that ability. And if I had the choice between that, uh, ultimately the goal for me is to get away from that nine-to-five life and and be in a position where the outside stuff is affording my family what the inside stuff affords it now, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, you got to start somewhere. I mean, like you, if you can start basic ba ba basic things. Like I, I like to write books because it's I like to write as well. I'm curious about what you're writing as well, a medium, because mm -hmm. write, writing is rather easy for me. And you can put it online and monetize it extremely easily. So there's a massive prerogative to create more. There's a principle that I follow, which is create uh, create more than you consume. So if you create more videos, more books, more blogs, more anything, any content, people will recognize that and appreciate it. But also, speaking about writing, I'm very curious. Uh, tell me about what you're writing on Medium, because I've heard that's a damn good place for posting like blogs. Oh, man. Medium is, for me, I've toyed around with the idea of uh, getting a, my own website. I purchased a URL and, and went through all that. But Medium is a great place to build an audience. They have an audience already. They have publications within Medium. It's it's free. 
and it really opens the door uh, to an audience that you wouldn't be able to get yourself, especially not for free. You'd have to invest in advertising and things like that to have access to the type of people that Medium gives you access to. And it's really just a cool space to explore other people's writing. So if you're interested in, in growing, you you should be reading other people too as much as writing. Um, so I think that for me, I love going through there and and writing. And, and there's different places you can go and kind of – for me right now, writing has been um, – you know, I kind of write in this personal development space. I have experiences I've been through that I've overcome and I've been able to see those things differently in hindsight. So I try to communicate that real life stuff like, you know, we can we can deal with life when it comes at us and be OK, even when our situation is not OK. And then, you know, I went through a divorce. So I started kind of writing about relationships a little bit. And that's the space that I've been in lately. And uh, it's actually gotten me the most attention, which is kind of ironic because I am pretty open on my blogs about my uh, dysfunction in that area. And that's gotten me the most popularity. (laughs) Yeah, but is that the kind of content you want to be known for? Uh, No, I want to be uh, I want to be known for writing about life. And I want to be known for not being afraid to talk about things that other people are afraid to talk about. Um, and for me, that's what I like to put into my writing. I like to be vulnerable. I like to be honest. I like to say the stuff that a lot of us think and feel, but nobody really talks about cause it's not cool or it's not tough or it's not like, it, you know, we have a lot of surface relationships these days, you know, the, as connected as we are in social media, a lot of our connections are very shallow. And I think when you can get people to go to a, a deeper level of connection that resonates with them, you can really see some change happen. And if people see that you're willing to be vulnerable with the world, I think they connect with that uh, in a special way. Yeah, definitely. Um, when you're vulnerable with the world, have you ever seen the film um in it? Um, I can't remember what it's called. The Ninth Eight. Mile... Eight Mile. Eight Mile. I actually wrote a blog about that. The very last scene with the rap battle. Yeah. Yeah, he disses himself. Very interesting <laughs> psychology. Because he because he admitted his own flaws and exposed them, that means that everyone knows about it. It's common knowledge. So the opposition couldn't really say anything because you know, it's, 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 we, we already know. By exp- interesting psychology that when you expose like your secrets, not secrets, when your, um, your weaknesses and your flaws which is also interesting storytelling right there, when you expose your flaws and share them with the world and proud, proudly use them, people respect you for that. People understand that. Everyone likes the root for the underdog, and everyone likes... They don't like perfection. Things, if things are too perfect, we don't like that naturally. It's just like, that can't be right. No, it's just <laughs> yeah, too, right. too fake or too perfect. No, no. It doesn't, I, it doesn't I, feel right. Right. I also think that when you can do that, you you take the power away from those things to harm you. Exactly. And and that's the biggest part of it is if you can put and, – and I don't mean like irresponsibly sharing. Like, you know, we all know those people that put all their personal business on Facebook mm-hmm. and their life is just a roller coaster of chaos. And, and you don't want to be like that, but you, there's a certain level of like, hey – These are things that like I know other people have felt and and I want to put it out there and I'm okay with that because I know that when I say it now, like I I already I already told you. So whatever you say about it can't hurt me. I already I put the power in my own hands. And there's an interesting uh, practice in Japan. And I love this, that when pottery is broken, when they put it back together, they fill the cracks with gold. So that adds beauty to the piece of pottery and value and we tend to want to hide those things where in other cultures they celebrate those things like that that's part of our journey that's part of what got us from where we were to where we are and we try to hide those but the reality is I, I don't believe those experiences are intended to be our own I think those experiences are intended to be shared with others we're wired for social connections Right. So our life experience is that thing that, you know, in the, in the context of our 
family, our community says like, Hey, when you're going through a tough time, like I'm there with you and I, and I can be sympathetic and empathetic and I can support you because I know that feeling. Right. But for the most part, the, the world and, and at large people shy away from that stuff. And it's not, you know, it, you, it, it's not about that. It's about shallow things. It's about what you have. It's about how you look. It's about, and all those things just add to, you know, the kind of, uh, turmoil that happens inside that we hide. So we don't have a good place to communicate it. We get this external pressure added and then we just hold it all in and it just slowly kills us. It becomes like cancerous. Hmm. Yeah, I see what you mean. But also, I'm very curious, what else are you writing about? Because you said that you write about things that people are afraid of talking about. Well, and recently I've written about uh, relationships and, and getting into them. That was the, the most recent thing because I think that's a, a scary um, avenue for some people <laughs> when the the way that the world has changed – I don't know how old you are, but I'm uh, going to be 35 in a few years and or in a few months. I said a few years, uh, in a few months. And I, I got divorced last year. I was a single guy, right? And uh, I don't do the bar thing. I'm a little too old for that. So you, people don't talk to each other in public anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you have all this weird dating apps and Tinder and plenty of fish so i spent some time kind of talking about my experience with dating and and the fear behind that um so that's kind of really just what i put on medium uh behind the scenes i'm working on a a screenplay that i've been writing for a little while for a short film that i want to produce next year and then I had, uh, in a previous life, I had sort of built a brand and I had written a book. So I tend to write, I intend to write another book to follow that up and kind of talk about my journey from where I was to where I am now when I start writing anyway. What did you mean by a previous life? Well, uh, in a, I was a, a preacher for a few years. So mm-hmm. I had, I'd built a brand. And, and an image, if you will, behind that um, experience. So in that scene, I had, like I said, I'd built the brand. I'd built kind of a name and a platform and an audience. But uh, life changed, seasons change. You have to shift. And uh, I think, was it James Altucher has the book Reinvent Yourself? He says you should reinvent yourself every three to five years. Hmm. So – I decided to take his advice. I went through a divorce. Uh, life changed. My direction changed. My beliefs changed. My thoughts and feelings changed. So uh, I decided to take it a different direction. But because I had the experience speaking in front of people and I had done some writing in that space, I decided I wanted to keep doing that. I felt that was something that was inside of me that was kind of pulling. You know, I have this like a uh, – push pull thing right like sometimes you have to push yourself to do things some things just pull you to do it um you know it's like i i enjoy writing so the keyboard kind of pulls me to it and whatever that looks like at that that day is really just dependent on a million different things but the draw is there so i always just want to do that and put whatever i feel inside of me out there that way hmm. um going back a little bit reinvent yourself every three to five years what was that name of the book it was it was called reinvent yourself by james altucher a-l-t-u-c-h-e-r okay interesting um yeah. i've heard of similar principles like that with your business but not with your life that's that's new yeah and it's a uh, it's really interesting and it's something that i kind of uh, adopted like I, I I sort of think about that now um, going forward in the things that I'm doing I'm like okay how long can I sustain this thing for and what would be the move after that you know like what what becomes the next step so in my 
sort of visualizing my direction, I have the the next like one the next you know six months to a year where do I want to be next one to mm. three where do I want to be and then it's like three to five where where do I want to be and usually three to five now it's like kind of okay where where's the pivot what what shifts then because you want to kind of keep it moving and, and keep it evolving and growing some way so you don't get stale one and and you don't lose your I think so you don't lose your motivation you know it becomes fun to create your own experience and that's ultimately what you're doing and that's the that's that kind of rebelling against the system thing yeah, yeah um oddly enough every three to five years that's interesting um i agree with that and oddly enough i was talking about an hour or so ago talking about moving see to to spain or mexico or cambodia because this this channel, everything I do is all online. It's on Amazon, it's on YouTube, it's on Instagram. This setup here is very mobile. All you really need is internet connection. So you can move to, say, Spain or certain parts of Spain, sun all year round, very nice weather, not too long of a flight, <laughs> English speaking. You get some nice places there. Generally, like a, a digital nomad or a minimalistic, minimalistic life and do all this in there. Or, or Mexico, where there's not much laws or regulation. Anti-system, guys, you said before. So there's right. like there's very few laws there. Some some parts are better than others, whatever. And then in Cambodia as well. If you want exoticness, hey, there's a good a good example. And there's not much laws over there. And there's generally speaking, it's quite a new economy. So a, a, lot, a lot of opportunity there. But I was thinking digital nomad, because all this is mobile. And it's like... Every three to five years, yeah, I could do with that. It's been three to five years since the last drastic change, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah it's, it, it, interesting it's, concept, I like that. It's um, so interesting you said that too, because m- m- one of my five years in, in, in the near future, see, yeah. I have kids right now. My youngest is 12, my, a, a son and a daughter. My son is 13, my daughter's 12. I told myself I didn't, you know, people do, they call it like a gap year, like between high school and college, they go away for a year, they travel the world, they do something like that, right? So I decided, I purposed in my heart that when my kids were done their their course of education and they were on their own as uh, adults, I was going to take a gap year and I would just, you know, give up my house for a year and I would go travel somewhere around the world and just uh, write about my experience. And hop from place to place. All I need is a laptop and a passport, and I can handle the rest. Oh, yeah, definitely. And um, let's go back a little bit. You also mentioned, like, six months and three-year goals and all the rest. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my videos, and one thing that I I, I learned I, I, by a property investor, I think he's in Florida or California. This is years ago. Now, he, he, he told me that he, um, he tries to aim for, like, an eight-month year. And I also learned try and go for like a three month year. So try and pick like five goals to do like per calendar year, and then every say three months or so try and complete you know one or two or three of them. So you essentially pushing yourself. The, the principle is to push yourself to accomplish more in three three months than right. most people accomplish in either one year, three years, five years, or ten years really pushing to, to really hustle and do do some cool stuff. Yeah, I think that's the I, I'm I love that principle. I mean that's the one of the things that it makes it so important for me to set those longer term goals is that I am that guy who wants to like inside of me when I want to do something and I'm passionate about it, my drive is like, let's go. You know, like mm. it's I wanna I like that concept of um, I think Tony Robbins says it. If if you want to take the island, you have to burn your boats. Like yeah. you you're 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 not swimming in the deep end of the pool if you're holding on to the side. You know what I mean? Like you have to take risks and you have to be willing to like go right. And I want to do that, but at the same time, you have to be smart <laughs> and you have to think long term because you you might burn yourself out. You're going to spread yourself too thin. So I think that the the five, three and five year goals give me sort of a grounding and balance that's necessary um, to not be just running myself crazy all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, but combine it with that, what I what I also say is you say like, uh, you know, that idea of let's go. I call that just not messing around, not messing about. 
<laughs> right. just get yeah, just get going just stop messing around kind of thing just hop to it and right. uh, combine combine the three months idea with what i call doing the work once and getting paid forever because a lot of people i'm not sure if i mentioned this but i think probably i'm not sure but people talk you know people people have nine to five so that they're exchanging one hour of their life for an hour's equivalent of wage okay that's fine but I also say I'm I'm too lazy for that. So I will create something and put it in the world in one way or another, doing the work once and getting paid forever in, yeah. as like a benchmark, like a higher standard. So a, a good example is like a YouTube video yeah. with, with an evergreen title. I'll create that, put the SEO in, all the tags and all the rest in, share it with the world, and there's there's different ways of monetizing it or directly or indirectly. So I'm doing the work once and getting paid forever. And I further combine that by saying... Be ambitious, Anthony. Be ambitious, but at the same time, be lazy. Be ambitious to do stuff, to create things, to go or whatever, etc., etc. Be ambitious, but be lazy. What's the minimum amount of energy, the minimum amount of input required to achieve, to achieve just what you want? Be ambitious, but lazy. I like that. That's kind of my style. <laughs> oh, that's, that's cool. Yeah. I mean, I like to work hard and I like to chill hard. Oh, you know, yeah, of course. I, I think I think you have to have a good work ethic, but you also have to have a good like uh, play ethic. You know, you got to take care of yourself and you got to have fun, man. Life is too short to work seventy hours a week, and sometimes you got to unplug and you got to just kick back <laughs> and do nothing. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I'm at times I'm struggling a little bit to relax. Sometimes there's always more things to do, but. But the way I also see it is like if eat, well, I need to block that out now. For twenty four <laughs> for twenty four months, then you can have caviar for the rest of your life. Right, exactly. Yep, Gary V. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. And that's what I mean. Ultimately, that's what it it's all about. And I'm in that space right now. You know, I'm I'm trying to to build, and it, it's funny because I'm simultaneously trying to build and then figuring out trying to figure out what i'm gonna build after i build this thing that's not yet built right so it's interesting uh perspective wise there but i mean the goal is really i i don't care what i have to do i'm gonna put in the work i'm gonna i'm gonna record the podcast i'm gonna write the blogs i'm gonna put the content out there uh, i love documenting life i love taking pictures i love doing the social media thing i have a lot of fun with it i manage some accounts for some people and help them with it and i've seen I've, I've built a brand once and now I'm building another one again and I've kind of been able to, to maneuver things how I've wanted to and, and still build an audience and it's been fun. I really enjoy that stuff. So it's been a good time. Um, but it's not, you know, I'm not quitting the day job tomorrow because, you know, they're knocking down my door with big paychecks to plug their products in my videos. You know what I mean? I'm, yeah. But um, I'm curious then, what are you building and working on now? Well, right now, um, really, I'm trying to, to build an audience to shift towards putting the writing out um, on my own. I mean, I'm, I enjoy I enjoy the medium space, uh, and I, as much as I love it, I really do want to kind of shift traffic to my own thing um, where I can put all my own content. I'm starting a podcast. Uh, I've been doing some interviews and stuff and around the same space around really uh, just it's the it's my called Anthony and Portillo and friends. And it's literally me putting a microphone uh, at the table with me and a friend and having a conversation about life, things that we're experiencing and, you know, what what's it like to be 34 and single or 34 and sober or, you know, what's it like to walk through this situation or that. So I'm really uh, concentrating all my effort and and my content into that personal development space. Uh, I do Instagram videos every morning. I kind of just took a vacation from that um, to recenter, but I'll be starting again on Monday. And those are kind of like hey, you know life hacks. I recommend books sometimes, or exercises I find, or practices that I think are important. And they're just little one minute videos that uh, you know I throw at people. And uh, and interestingly enough. Even though my audience is, is small there, I have had some people contact me through that avenue and say, hey, 
you know, would we consider sponsoring our product or something like this for, you know, so there was, there's been opportunity out there just through that little bit that I was doing. Um, so I think that, you know, it's in my mind when I'm thinking in a year or so, I would like that to be, I would like content creation to be what I do. I would like to be Anthony Portillo media company, you know, what I'm, I'm just full time and that's my bread and butter. Uh, that would, that's ideal. And I think that that's starting, uh, that's what I'm building towards now. Um, is there a link for that? Is, is it like, I want, I'm going to include that in the link in the description. Is there a link for that at all? For? For your the, podcast. Uh, it is Anthony Portillo and Friends on iTunes. iTunes, uh, ah, okay. Yeah, iTunes. We are on Google Play as well. Right. So, How are you hosting? How are you hosting uh, your uh, actually, content? Actually, here's, an, here's another uh, good tip for people out there. Anchor. Anchor is absolutely free, and it's an app on your phone. You can record it. They have call-in capabilities. They automatically post it to iTunes, Google Play, and I believe Amazon Music now, and it's 100% free. Wait, wait. I used to have a podcast a few years ago, but I used to use Podbean for the hosting. Yeah, I'm familiar. I used them too before. Well, they, 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 want, they want to charge yearly, and it's like, no, nah, you're all right. I'm not bothering with that. How hmm. You're using Anchor then? Anchor.fm, I believe, is the website. And they have an app in the App Store on the iPhone or Google. And I do everything right through the app. And you can connect through the computer so I can record, say I can record a conversation on my phone, right. upload it to my my Mac here at, at home, and then upload it to Anchor from my desktop. And then let me get this straight. So if I've got the audio file, I can upload it to Anchor. Yep. And then it goes from Anchor to iTunes autom- automatically. Yep. Not having to copy RSS fees or anything like that. No, no RSS fees. And it goes to uh, Amazon Music. I'm not 100% on Amazon, but I know it's oh, Google. I know I, it's Google and iTunes, yeah. iTunes and you can, at the very least. And, yeah, and you can add clips. You can record like intros and have your intro play and then an interview and then an outro. You can put music to it. Uh, I think they do put an anchor ad at the beginning and end of every episode, but I've oh, only man. kind of put out, I've only put out a preview episode right now um, because I've been recording. I want to have like kind of a stockpile so I can consistently put one out every week. Yeah, I'll look into that because I because I'm thinking the problem with this podcast oh, kind of problem is that it's only on YouTube, and I'm thinking to broaden the you know appeal. I must get on iTunes. There must be a way of free a free way of hosting it. Oh, Anchor's Anchor. the way to go. I'll yeah. look into that. Yeah, it's really cool. I'll look into that. Cool. And speaking of which, um, yeah, content, content creation. Cool, yeah. Uh, how long have you been doing your podcast? Well, I just – the podcast in New Development, it was – I was kind of – like I said, I, I, I was rebranding myself uh, it, for a little while there. I had gone through a divorce. Um, I was a, a preacher, and now I'm not. Uh, so there was a lot – of there was a little bit of time there where I was just quiet and didn't really say anything because mm. I needed to kind of tie up some loose ends on on that end there. So when I started uh, writing again and, and putting content out again, uh, I was trying to decide whether or not I was going to go with a vlog or, excuse me, whether I would do the podcast. And when I decided to do the podcast, it really was just a matter of wanting to really lock in what I wanted to do and make sure I had the time to do it because uh, I, was, I was dealing with a lot of things. I had a lot of stuff going on and I didn't want to overwhelm myself. So it really just came down to timing. So uh, I set everything up on Anchor. I have a few episodes recorded. I got a few more lined up to record. So I'll probably put it out sometime like September, October, and then we'll put one out weekly from there. Hmm. Yeah, what I want to do for this is just infrequent um, just find people, invite them for the calendar app, for nice for organization, and then just 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 weekly. You know, oh, not, well, not weekly. Ideally, once every other day or every day, but in, at infrequent times. Yeah, that's cool. I think that's you know people like that stuff, and I think they're the like kind of randomness. Like I'll, I'll never put out a blog the same day every week, <laughs> just because oh, no, no. I I think that's too programmatic for me. I don't. I'm disciplined in certain things when it comes to like my my uh, 
lifestyle, but when it comes to creativity, it's very, I'm very much a, a, a wing it kind of guy. Just, I feel the urge and I go. Nah, I'm, I'm much more structured and organized with that. Um, I upload, I, I endeavor to upload one to three videos a day. Probably do one because it's much more, it's much less hassle and much more uh, um, sustainable. Right. I've got loads of ideas for content, and what I need to do, oddly enough, tomorrow I need to just create two weeks worth of content: the, the video, the thumbnail, the description. So uh, I say I'm lazy. So on, on a Monday and a Tuesday and Wednesday, I just drag and drop the file and done. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I'm not, not not messing around every day recording something. I tried that for about a week or two, and it's like this is so tedious. And it's like, no, I need to re- record bulk. Uh, but with, with these, with, with the podcast, I'll record it, and I'll clean it up, and then I'll just put it with the rest. I've got a whole day, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'll just put it in the folder for the day, and then done. So this this one will actually be online on Tuesday. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's so, fantastic. See, I'm, I'm lazy but ambitious. I want to get, get a channel every day, but I'm, not, I'm too lazy to record every day. You know, forget that. I'll just record <laughs> two, two weeks' worth and be like, done. <laughs> and then I can relax. I've got much more free time to do to do the podcast, and I'm I'm also going to start doing YouTube live as well because I've noticed that doing live stuff, live broadcast, is amazing engagement, right? And an amazing way to get community, and because it, it's so responsive. If someone's got a question that's a subscriber, they can ask you. And Google did some research a few years ago and said something like, um, um, it takes either seven touch points. Or eleven hours of content for people to form a bond with you, like f- being familiar with you. Right. So if you create, say, seven blogs on Medium or blogs in general, uh, and/or if they if they consume eleven hours of your content, like like, like like videos, they'll be very familiar with you, what you stand for, and, and, and what you believe in, and then and then that that by the way, that is the foundation that trust, that love, that, right. that love, that admiration, that rapport is the foundation. To build an online community, build an online business, and I think right. trust today is incredibly valuable, and it's very, very important, and it's a must-have in today's kind of economy, and digital economy, and all that. And I think that's honestly that's why authenticity is so important. That's why I don't mind being like vulnerable and putting myself out there, because I think that you know you can you can fake the funk all you want, but at mm-hmm. the end of the day, you got to remember, you know, that you're faking it. Um, and I just know that if I'm me all the time, that's what you're always going to get. And I don't have to remember what image I put out or, you know, what persona I'm supposed to be in a certain context. I can just be me. So whether it's a video, whether it's a vlog, uh, a blog or, you know, an Instagram story, you, you're going to see things that are pretty consistent. You know, I try to be inspirational. I'm goofy. I play with Snapchat filters. I make fun of myself. I, you know, make inappropriate jokes. I like, you know, I curse and stuff. It's <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big kid. I just try to enjoy life and let people know that like you can have fun, man. You don't have to be so serious all the time. Yeah, no, I, I think I'm a bit. I think I'm a bit too serious for that. Um, <laughs> I, I think so, but anyway, but Anthony. Before we begin to wrap this, uh, wrap the podcast up, mm-hmm. uh, what do you? What's next for you? You know, for the next three months, six months, what's next for you? Well, for the next uh, three months, I'm going to really uh, sit down and try to wrap up, write uh, at least preliminary writing on the screenplay I've been working on. I would like to aim to start putting together uh, some shooting plans for you know the fall or winter. Um, so, and that's going to be like a super low budget thing. I'm going to probably record it on my iPhone, edit it and just put it on my YouTube channel. Um, but I want to, I just filmed an independent movie, so it's my first kind of acting gig. So I want to kind of piggyback on that. That's going to be released soon. They're going to start submitting that to film festivals. So if I can use the momentum of that to kind of Say, hey, here's this little creative project I did. Um, I'd like to do that. So I'm trying to position myself that way now. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I love to create stuff. I, I want to write. I'm actually writing a book right now on marketing. It's my second book, nonfiction. And uh, I want to write loads of fictional work. I just like creating stuff. Just put stuff out there. Just just create and share and just um, yeah, 
just just be known, just share stuff, create stuff. Just it's just cool feeling. You you, you spend all this time creating something, in your case, a film. A film. They don't say that very often. A film, and then you put it out there, and people like it. They enjoy it. And right. It's like that 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 feeling, that sensation is amazing. Well, that's it's, the it's, yeah. It's, that's the beauty. Go ahead. Sorry. You're creating something, and you put it in the world, and people are enjoying it. That's amazing. Yeah, that's the beauty of any art form, you know? I mean, I consider myself an artist, and, and the beauty of the art is when people can connect with it on a personal level, and when they can say that, like, hey, you're, something that you created touched me in a place that, you know, I haven't been touched before, or a place that I didn't know that I still had, or, you know, I connected with something you said in a way that made me feel like things were going to be okay. Um, that's the coolest part, man. Like, it doesn't matter how much money I make, uh, in, over the course of my life, just to hear someone say like, Hey, you helped me out of a bad situation, or you made me believe in myself when I, when I thought I didn't anymore. Um, that is priceless to me that, you know, I, I live in a place where, uh, more people lose than win. And uh, any time I can see someone that I've invested time or energy into win, uh, I want to take advantage of it and I want to celebrate it and I want to tell people about it. Yeah, definitely. And um, and, and spe- speaking of speaking about it, what is the best way for the audience to get in touch with you? Uh, they can get in touch with me through Instagram. It goes down on the DM. I am Anthony Portillo at on Instagram, um, from there, you know, you can get me on, on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash Anthony C Portillo, P O R T I L L L. I respond to messages. I like to engage with people. I like to talk to people. So those two are the best way. Uh, I am Anthony Portillo at gmail.com. If you want to get email, uh, want to go that route. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you at home, if you haven't already, click on the subscribe button below and press the bell notification right next to it. Because this channel is all about helping you, yes you, become a remarkable entrepreneur. How cool is that? Super cool. <laughs>